Aloha everyone, I'm Maria Christina Owl and welcome to Wise Women Dialogues on Full Disclosure and Ascension. Episode 19, it has been a very long time. <laughs> so it's good to be back and I have brought some absolutely beautiful, spectacular, incredible women with me for this kind of return dialogue. And so welcome to Cherie Ariano in Arizona. Thank you. Welcome to you, Michelle Melendez. Out <laughs> here. Aloha. In Hawaii. Welcome Amanda Eloesh in California. And welcome Therese from Washington. Thank you. Um, you're all absolutely amazing. And let's start off with just hearing a little bit about the work you do, each of you, um, and just really kind of maybe give us some bullet points of what is your great passion today on earth as a woman doing your work. Mm. Let's start with you, Amanda. I'm Amanda Eloash, your quicker waker upper. And uh, my mission is to help people to access your inalienable sovereignty, your multidimensional self to rescue the light that's been hidden inside of subconscious programming. And I work with sacred medicines to assist that journey. Yes, you do. <laughs> Thank you, sister. How about you, Therese? Hi, everyone. I'm Therese Tucker. I created Blythe Starlight, which is a brand that helps people access their inner mystic and develop their intuition. And I do that through lots of different fun ways. Um, I really want to help people activate their knowing of the amazing creator being they are. And I do that through art. I do it through jewelry. I do it through cosmic, uh, cosmic reading patterning. So through spirit circles and um, gathering with others as well as mentorship. Yes. Great. Thank you, Therese. Uh, Michelle. Oh. Aloha, everyone. I am Michelle Melendez. I'm a live in a body you love specialist. I wrote the book End Dieting Hell, How to Find Peace in Your Body and Release the Weight. It's won four book awards, was a bestseller on Amazon. And I take people through de-stress and detox programs, as well as bring them here to the big island of Hawaii and take them on a special retreat slash uh, live in a body you love uh, spot um, space. Yes, you're amazing. Thank you, Michelle. And how about you, Sheree? Beautiful. Hi, I'm Sheree Ariano. I created Divine Light Quantum Healing and Divine Light Essentials. And I'm an energy healer and I also a star seed and I'm helping star seeds wake up to their true mission, their life's purpose, their divine path. And um, I create wonderful healing tools to help people heal themselves because ultimately we can all heal ourselves. So I make it really quick and simple through the use of affirmations, essential oils, crystals, and things like that. So that's, that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And you're, and you're all so much more than that. <laughs> it's, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the that's bullet the point. Sound bite. Yeah. yeah. Um, and for me, I, I'm, I'm me. And I mean, if I'm kind of hosting, okay. So what I would like to do is have each of us talk on this, like the, the focus for today, I really wanted to focus on where are we heading as a planet? And as you know, I just published my book, Planetary Ascension. Um, the purpose of 3D and the choice we face, humanity faces, which is that choice of love over fear, right? Service to mm -hmm. greed, service to self, or service to others. We're all one. Um, and I, I feel that we are really in the crunch time, pressure cooker time of um, being faced with many catalysts, tests, um, invitations to make that choice at the deepest levels. And so I know you all as star seeds, could you each talk a little bit about where is the planet heading right now? And 
what is the role of star seeds? Do you see star seeds and light workers? So let's start with you, Michelle, and then we'll go to Cherie. Oh, thank you. That's a great question. So I think uh, I feel like we are we're headed toward uh, a lot that's coming and a lot of awareness uh, that is going to be showing itself in the media that has not been seen, especially to people who um, haven't been looking and uh, but it needs to be it needs to be shown truth is coming out and I think it's going to be challenging for a lot of people to become aware of the way the um, what has been happening in our world you know I woke up or started realizing uh, what what world I'm really living in uh, about eight years ago and when I first realized I cried and I I was depressed for three days. I couldn't get out of bed. And then I was like, what do we do? And there was nothing to do. So I think that um, a big uh, truth bomb is going to be showing up very soon. Uh, and I think our role is to remember that we are more than these bodies, this media and this uh, propaganda that has been going on in the world for so long has been teaching us and programming us to think there's something wrong with us and to always think there's something to fix about ourselves. But really the truth is that this is a human experience and that no matter what trauma you've gone through, your, your mission, not just as a, a, um, a seed, but um, a light seed is just by being in a human body is to integrate is to honor your journey and to have compassion for yourself and everything you've gone through. The Buddha says, you more than anyone in the entire universe deserve your love and compassion. Mm -hmm. So the one thing I would um, just give to people right now is to give yourself compassion right now. Give yourself a break from making mm -hmm. yourself wrong or from making others wrong. And find just I, I always put my hand on my heart because it drops me out of my head and my thoughts into my body and into my heart. Mm -hmm. And your heart was the first organ created in your in your mother's womb. It's connected to infinite intelligence, infinite source of love. So when I put my hands on my heart and breathe into it, I start to find peace. And we're going to get through this. Each one of us was meant to be here. And we got this. We totally got this. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. Um, I'm going to pick up on the love frequency there that you started because um, that's a huge part of my mission, actually, is just spreading the frequency of love. Um, in human design, I'm the vessel of love, and um, I try to bring that pr presence forward in all of the work that I do and all the people that I meet. And, you know, whether you're a star seed or a highly evolved human or you know, other, <laughs> I think that we can all tap into that love frequency um, because it's available to all of us. And I think that like humanity is shifting and a lot of star seeds are coming online and waking up. And, you know, if you believe that our souls are billions of years old, we, our mission, the reason we're here now in this timeline in this ascension timeline is to help humanity wake up. And we have been an, in such a deep slumber like constant programming, constant brainwashing with yeah. the TV and the media. And now it's not working as much anymore. There's just people waking up in droves. Like it's kind of like, oh my God, all these people waking up, you know? <laughs> it's like starseed groups with 300,000 people in the group, you know, like that's amazing. And, um, and it's all ages too, you know, I'm talking to 20 year olds and I'm talking to 60 year olds and um, it's really exciting times. And so, um, a lot of people wake up with amnesia and we're like, okay, why am I here again? I have something important to do, but I can't find the memo. Like I can't remember what I'm supposed to do. And it's an unfolding process. It's like peeling the layers off of an onion. And sometimes we need to go backwards and heal childhood trauma, um, old wounds, human wounds. A lot of star seeds, I believe, um, we incar we choose to incarnate into families that um, we might call dysfunctional. Um, personally speaking, for myself, that was my that is my story, and that catapulted me into getting on my path, finding my mission, waking up, remembering why I'm here, and why I went through so much trauma. 
And so if we can heal those wounds, those, those human earthly wounds and the childhood trauma, then we can be in service to others. So that's a big part of the Starseed mission is to be in service to humanity and others because we need to stay on the Ascension timeline, not the 3D matrix timeline. And I feel like the Earth, the planet is kind of going through this bifurcation split and we have a choice to go this way or that way. So the star seeds and the light workers are like, come over here, come with us, you know, <laughs> let's stay on the 5D timeline. So um, that's my mission. Um, I also, you know, love the topic of ascension. So I hope we get to talk about that more today um, because it's also a big important thing uh, to discuss and, and, you know, keep in our awareness. So, yes, thank you. Thank you, Sheree. Yeah. And who wants to hop on that next? Yeah, I can go. Uh, well, I uh, was born kind of kind of awake. Uh, and then, you know, as I got older, I started realizing, oh, there's a bunch of bullshit that I bought about what three dimensional reality is and what I'm supposed to be doing here as a third dimensional being. Um, and what I've found in my 50 years of being on the planet is that we are multidimensional beings. There's a lot of trauma uh, from being programmed and conditioned out of access to that of our beyond our five senses. And, uh, and I think that a lot of star seeds have access like I do, you know, and, and like, okay, I'm just gonna you know, focus on that and not recognizing we are whole beings and, and in our multidimensionality, we are still in a three dimensional re life and body. And so there are parts of us physically, mentally, emotionally that have been traumatized mm -hmm. and to take our wholeness with us. It's essential to do to bring the love and the healing to those parts so that we can ascend fully as whole beings and um not too long before the pandemic uh was in a private ceremony with someone and it this this message came through and it was like this is for more than this person and it's for you amanda and it's for other people as well and then as the pandemic came in i realized oh, okay this is a big one and the message was all of the prayers have been made and everything is in a sacred motion. The only thing that you need to do is to treat your life as sacred, to be kind and loving and gentle with all of your parts, especially the ones that are mm -hmm. the most dense and in trauma to move through these big waves of growth and learning and healing and continue to honor treating your life as sacred. And when we trust that sacredness beyond the fear, beyond the shoulds and uh, the fear of survival and really go beyond that into how do I treat all of me this moment as sacred, that's the, that's the way through. So that's what I've been doing and helping other people to remember to do. Yes, Ashe, we'll get more into that later as well. Thank you, Amanda. Wow, so many good points are being made. It's hard to split. It's like, yeah, I want to say yes to everything. And oh. <laughs> um, so as I'm listening, and I'm trying to like, take it all in and sort of form my answer here. Um, I'm going back to the, the bifurcation for a minute. So this bifurcation of worlds. Um, so Dolores Canton, it, Canon is a spiritual mentor of mine. I met her in spirit after she passed, and then I discovered her work, and it was like, I love it. Um, but she talks about this. She talks about having been told that the there's a two world split, and I've also heard of like a possible three world split. Um, and this is where I get really excited about helping people recognize how powerful they are. Because one of the fears that I hear that comes up from this idea of a world splitting situation and some people going this way and some people going that way, is I hear star seeds and light workers being worried that they didn't make the cut and getting stuck on the planet they don't want to be on, or the idea of being separated from ones you love 
because maybe they're going to make a different choice. And just about timelines in general is that we are so we are such powerful beings. We literally get to choose what comes next. You've already chosen in your heart where you're going. You're going to go there. And and so part of it is like to to hear all of this incredible information. And as I understand it, we're going to hear more. Even those of us who are awake are going to hear things and learn things that we haven't yet processed or received. And it's going to blow our mind even more. And of course, being a curious person, I'm always like, what, what is it? <laughs> what could it be? But I, but I keep wanting to come back to you. And, and this is in alignment with what Amanda was saying. The messages I've gotten from my spirit team the whole time you know, as I'm watching things that look like, you know, we're watching the crumbling of an old paradigm. We're yeah. watching the disintegration of the dark timeline, literally everything that was built and infiltrated um, within what, what we thought were just normal structures and it's all been infiltrated. But here's the big joke is that all of us light beings, all of us star seeds, we used the negative tactic to, to create the big switch, we decided to infiltrate because we couldn't persuade, yeah. right? So the, you know, higher dimensionals, the, the beings of light, the benevolent ones, they're, they're always honoring free will. And from the outside, there was only so much that we could do. We could only really watch. And then if someone, you know, connected, we could say, hey, go this way, it's better, you know, but we were, we weren't as effective until we, as a collective realized we need to go in, we need to go into this matrix and infiltrate from within and bring the light through our own experience. So what's so powerful about it is knowing that that was the tact we took and knowing the numbers that came in. And, and I think you guys all know it's way more than we mm -hmm. needed. We came on mass and we came hard. And so we've already won. And I, yeah, I keep have. kind of coming back to this is we've already won. We just have to play out the game. Right. We just have to make the choice. And, and Maria, that's why your book is so incredible. And you hit on a point that I personally am excited about is trying to understand 3D. Because when we understand that this whole dimension is simply about getting us to make an authentic choice, and that's why we're, you know, memory wiped. That's why we don't know who we are for real. That's why we can't access the information from outside of us. We're always being driven within to find it. But we're here to make this truly authentic choice of, of polarity, right? Which way do we go? And um, this bifurcation sort of represents that on a, what my team tells me is it's more of a, ectoplasmic shift than a, a like all the world cracking in half and turning into two planets it's like a it's weird it's like this ectoplasm and so it's an energetic thing where I, I don't quite know if we'll be literally walking on the same planet but having a 180 degree different experience from someone who's chosen right the other massive timeline that's available um but the the beauty is we're here to make a choice. You're a yeah. sovereign being with free will. You're a very powerful creator. And all you have to do is choose. And that's, that's kind of like, the, this is why it's hard to answer that question because it's a choose your own adventure, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way to sum it up. <laughs> uh -huh. Choose your own adventure. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely is. And it is an individual it is an individual journey, very individual. And one thing that my helpers keep reminding me as I look at the, you know, future, I hold the future and um, step, you know, step into co-creation with the great creator around that future. Um, the thing they keep reminding me is that I am an empowered co-creator and that every time I make a decision towards more wholeness in myself, it's crystallizing the timeline. You know, the, it's fine tuning and crystallizing that timeline of wholeness and, you know, uh, what I call the golden age on earth. And, you know, that's, that's coming. And 
So yeah, thank you everybody for sharing. And I feel like we're really spiraling into some juicy, juicy stuff here. Um, I wanted to just share one more thing about, uh, we got onto, some of you have been sharing in 2020, 2019, 2018, 2019, that you had information come through that was from your helpers and they were preparing you for what was to come without giving you the exact details around it, which is, you know, the law of confusion. They have to kind of protect mm -hmm. that so you can go through it with everyone else. Um, and I also had that download come in in 2018. It started coming in, started having the prophetic dreams years before that. And in my dreams and in the messages that came through me, which a lot of those are transcribed in Planetary Sense in my book, it's a very much the collapse. It's very much this experience of the dismantling and death of uh, old structures and systems that are toxic. And mm -hmm. because we have been so, yeah. humanity has been so immersed and interwoven and grew up and were raised by those toxic systems, there is a percentage of belief in us that we are that system. And so as it's dismantling, we're faced with um, deciding, like what is, who, like asking the question, like what truly is me? Who actually am I? And is that really who I am that, that is dying? Um, or am I something much more, right? And, and just looking at mortality, like, am I really a mortal being in a devouring cycle in 3D? Or am I actually made up of fractal and eternal life grids and matrices, right? Like, who actually am I? And this morning, the helpers came in. Actually, it was yesterday when I went into that crazy altered state. <laughs> they, so the Arcturians came in yesterday, one of my contacts there, uh, Nepesis, and she showed me that I was on this ship with her way above in the atmosphere, above the Hawaiian, above the ocean, the Pacific. And she gave me this download about, um, when the dismantling and as the dismantling happens, it will simultaneously have the arising of the new harmonious uh, structures. And she's like, yeah. that alone is going to accelerate the awakening process. And so we understand your concern for people you love who may seem a bit denser and maybe in more ignorance around things um not doing their self-care work really deep in perhaps their phobias or addictions or what have you like not in self-love um it may it's we understand you have concern over you know your sisters and brothers around these things yet know that part of what has kept you so confused is the cursed structures that are completely yeah. discordant to the harmonic. And when you're in a Petri dish <laughs> that is put on a big speaker that's vibrating into the water of the Petri dish, this discordant frequency, you're going to be completely dysregulated and trying to survive. Mm -hmm. So you adapt and you create survival mechanisms and you do all your things to survive through that. It gets kind of hardwired because you inherit a bunch of it too from your family. But suddenly the speaker is pulsing out 432 hertz or 528 hertz, right? And it's slowly like I'll just unravel one, one discordant sound unravels and a new tone comes in. And without the bombardment of what is toxic and discordant, um, there will be a vast, a much vaster opportunity for waking up and healing at an, at a more accelerated rate. Uh, so that was an amazing insight. Um, I wonder if you guys want to now talk about, um, you know, any, any insight you had of that this was coming and in what form did that come to you? And what was kind of like Amanda just shared, what was the kind of like that key 
message for for the community for more than just you so whoever wants to jump on that i'd, I'd like to speak on that um briefly and then i'm going to go plug in my my ipad here uh well so um not dreams but just a knowing like when stuff started happening with the pandemic i just i knew i was i was brought here to hawaii you know my sister's been on island for 25 years never wanted to live here then the time that i decided um i didn't even decide i was sitting on her lanai the breeze went through the palm trees and i felt this feeling like maybe i could live here and um when i finally made the decision i'm gonna go at this date everything lined up for me to move to the big island in exactly the location i i wanted to be in was here for a year and then the pandemic happened and as soon as soon as those mandates came i knew i was like this is this is why I came because I knew that it wasn't right. And I knew I had to step up and I knew that everything I had gone through from childhood, from cutting class and having signing my mom's signature and just standing up for myself. I mean, there's the list is long from, uh, from who I was when I was a teenager. I just knew I was like, that's why I came is that courage to do what I know is right, not what I know is easy. And I, I knew that, uh, that, that I, I knew exactly what I needed to do. And then also um, the other piece I wanted to share around that was the trauma that we all, um, as being a human being, we have emotional trauma. And what that trauma is not bad, it's not wrong. It's we've been we've been programmed to think, you know, that we're bad and we're wrong. And if something happens to us, it's bad, but it's not it's not good or bad or right or wrong. It's a frequency. It's an emotional frequency. But having said that, or I should say, and that frequency creates part of our personality. It's who we think we are. So it's it's a safety mechanism of how we start to see the world. You know, if we're in fear or if uh, sexual trauma happens, then we have a certain way of looking at relationships. So one of the pieces that I knew that um, when I found this information out, because I've been a weight loss coach for many, many years, and just really briefly, what I started realizing that, you know, no matter how much diet and exercise I helped women, uh, release weight, they'd go gain it back. So I knew I was missing something as a coach. And when I found that it's not diet and exercise, it's emotional trauma, it's the actual addiction to the frequency, which is a feeling to the feeling of I struggle with weight, that feeling of I struggle with weight will cons constantly keep that woman or that man, but I work with women overweight. So this frequency of trauma, of fear, of worry, of fear of scarcity, of, of fear of your neighbor, that is a that is a collective now tr uh, uh, post traumatic uh, um, trauma that we all have. So the, one of the best ways that I I give people to um, integrate that and or you can say heal is complete. The first thing you have to do is acknowledge that it lives in your body. It's a frequency, and this body is a memory holder. The blood holds every single memory and experience you've ever had in your entire life. And not only yours, but any traumatic experience from your lineage up to five, um, even sometimes seven years back. So that frequency that is held in your body is acknowledge it. Don't make it wrong. It's not bad. It's a frequency. You don't make energy bad. It's just a frequency. So you, again, hands on the heart. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, my battery's got 10%. So I'll just sit, share this and then go plug it in. Hands on your heart, touching that heart, touching that, that amazing organ that pumps a gallon of blood through your body per minute that is beating without you being plugged into the wall. It's beating. It's being guided by infinite source that moves the sun across the sky, acknowledging that heart breathe into the feeling. Because what happens is the, the trauma makes a shallow breathe, you know, fight, flight, freeze, shallow breathing up here. You breathe into it, into your diaphragm. You expand it with your breath. The breath that is connected to infinite intelligence, this space around us is not empty. This is a frequency. It's, a, it's, it's the geometric shape of the flower of life that is around us. So you breathe into that feeling. You expand it. If it's fear, expand it in your body 
what'll happen is it'll dissolve. It'll start to dissolve. And then you just tell yourself, Michelle, it's okay that I'm afraid. When I was going to that first store and I knew I was not going to wear a mask, I was, well, I was praying. I am the truth. I am the light. I am the, I am the love. I am a truth. I am the light. I'm the love. And I kept breathing as big as breaths I could breathe in my body to expand the fear out of my body. And the experience I had in that store was incredible. You know, I, I went, I'll share this story. I don't know if you want to share that story really quick, but just really fast. I was, went to the store, no mask, got to the checkout, three different ch ch people. You need to wear a mask. You know, and I said, I'm medically exempt. It's exhibit J of the emergency proclamation. They wouldn't, a one button, they wouldn't let me, they wouldn't let me check out. I said, who's the change maker? Who's the one in charge? I want to talk to that person. They brought down um, the manager. She had a mask on. And she said, we, it, you know, we have to have you wear a mask. Or we're going to get, we're going to get fined. I said, no, you won't. I said, it's emergency proclamation J. She said, would you wear a shield? I said, no. I said, I'm not going to put anything on my face that dishonors the men and women that fought and died for my freedom. And she walked me back in the store, checked me out herself, gave me a bag and said, she's medically exempt. And that, that's the power we have. I am the truth, I am the light, I am the love, and breathe into the fear. Breathe into it, and it'll, it'll, it'll start to uh, dissolve out of you, and magic will happen. I'm going to plug my, my, my computer in. You know, uh, that reminds me. Sorry. Go, Therese. Yeah. I, I was just going to say, it's so true, um, but it reminds me of, of in lucid dreaming. Um, when I learned this about lucid dreaming, it totally changed my perspective on how to deal with fear. But in, in lucid dreaming, if you're, mm. you know, you're aware in a lucid dream, that's the, the concept of it is that you have an awareness that you're dreaming and then the dream continues. And as you get mastery of it, you can shape the dream, which is very much a metaphor for what's happening here. We're in a giant <laughs> lucid dream. Okay. So in the lucid dream concept, let's say a nightmare monster is chasing you. This would be fear, right? It's chasing you. And the more you run, the more you are chased. It keeps pursuing you. It's only when you finally turn around and say, stop, <laughs> that the, it'll stop. And then if you're even brave enough to speak to it, what do you want? Mm -hmm. Or even more, embrace it. It transforms. And it is, it's, it's true in the dream state and it's true in this bigger dream state that we're in this this reality dream that we're in that what if we have the courage to face our fear we can transform we can transmute it and even transform it um and it's so powerful that they uh, some people who teach lucid dreaming teach it to children and children experience having mastery over their nightmares that they're literally dissolving nightmare creatures into playmates and little brothers and whatever it is that the message is trying to send him. So it just, you know, her saying that just reminds me of how powerful that technique is just in your life. It's the, the thing that you're afraid of. If you keep running from it, it will pursue you and it'll feel bigger and bigger. And the minute you turn yeah. and face it and embrace it, it literally transforms and it can actually be, I actually have a, a fear translator workshop that I do with people because I want them to understand that just like trauma is not something that you should feel ashamed of or, or, mm. or try to get away from. Neither is fear. Fear is actually, what if you actually saw fear as your friend? It has a purpose in your life, but it also has an incredible message for you. And I know like everyone here does some form of shadow work therapy. You all know that there is gold down there. There is gold. I like, I think of, I picture it going into the underworld, right? Yeah. Into Hades, but it's like, that's where all the gold in your life is. This is, there is beauty that's just waiting to be released down there. So I just wanted to kind of piggyback on that. And then Maria, to go back to your question, the message I got, and I, I was asking the ladies before we recorded. Uh, so I didn't have this, you know, I, I look back and I'm like, why didn't I feel that coming? I think it was because I heard about it when it was predominantly in China. And I literally said, no, I do not consent. I'm not playing that game. And I was done. So when I heard it came to the United States, I was pissed off. guys. I was like, no, <laughs> I do not. I will not play. Um, so it, it sort of 
that sort of blocked me from being able to sense it's coming, you know, but as it showed up, of course, I was like, why? I don't want to play this game. Why am I a part of this? And, you know, they let me know that this was, this is a turning point. So it had, you have to play. You don't have to play the way they tell you to play, but you have to be here for it because you've got a part to play. Right. But then they were like, yeah. and let all the healers know you guys are up next. And that was right. early 2020. Mm -hmm. And I still get that we haven't even touched on as healers. Our part is it, because there's waves, right? Where there's the, the group that has awakened aware, who's gone through all their shifting and are, are, are dealing with the trauma that's coming. There's, but there's so many who are just like awakening, awakening, awake. And there's going to be the stubborn ones at the end. You know, some of them might never want to believe it. You know, they might want to stay there and hang out where they are. That's their choice. That's fine. But we've got, you know, it, it's what I'm trying to feel in my energy field is like, is there a, a bell curve to this thing? Have we moved through the bell curve? Or are we just getting up the hill? <laughs> we have, I, that's what I feel. I feel like we're at the, mm. we're still moving up that hill, right? And then the other thing, and I yeah. wanted to just kind of tack this on to what Michelle said, is the other message I got is that one, we are gridded. The starseed people are gridded and you, you will get moved where you're supposed to move. You're an energy mm. anchor. You're going to be holding a frequency when that solar flash goes through you need to be in place for that yeah. because you act as a, a type of grounding rod slash umbrella protection energy for those who need it around you. So I, I had a lot of clients experiencing frustration with the fact that they want to move so bad and they can't, they can't move, you know, and that's because you're, you're anchored in place. And then just with the star seed part, my team told me we were planted in family, some have multiple star seeds. Most don't. Most have a star seed in a family. That's part of the shielding effect that we agreed to is that we were going to be placed where we would have a more of a maximum impact. So we were like evenly spreading ourselves throughout this planet so that if you could sort of picture it in your mind's eye, where all these little anchor points. And when this thing lights up, it's like we connect, right? And we create this beautiful grid and here's the crazy thing too is that this is not the first time we've done this here in this lifetime and that's where my mind goes wow because <laughs> apparently back in 19 I, I don't have the year right I know it's early 90s between 90 and 92 I think there was some kind of incoming um it was like a type of radiation I believe and I'm getting this information from a book called the book of secret wisdom um so what happened was there was this incoming type of radiation attack and humanity had to make a choice they had to choose love and if they didn't it was gonna toast us all basically and we chose love and love shielded us mm. it shielded us. we've been shielded a, a couple of times now so even though this looks scary, I'm kind of not afraid because we we've done this. This is not our first rodeo. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes, wow. that's great. <laughs> I've, I've seen that star scene that was beautiful. as well in my meditations. And it's one thing that my guides have also shown me to resource when we when we need that extra support and resource that we can put down our grounding cord like a like an oak tree root system and you literally interweave with all like the grid of star seeds all over the earth and mm -hmm. then you draw up mm -hmm. and it's this shared infinite source of courage and strength and nourishment so thank you for naming that now i want to get sheree in on beautiful that. awesome <laughs> i love that oak tree uh, vision thank you for that oh. um so yeah, so for me, I guess you could say I had my first awakening in 2001, um, and then it happened again in 2012, and it was like a fully different mission came in. And it was just this strong sense of urgency, like, oh my God, I got to get my SHIT together, you know? 
and I need to like learn how to do all these things or remember how to do all these things. And so from 2012 to 2017, I just studied and learned as much as I could about, you know, meditation, spirituality, energy fields, how to contain it, how to manage it. And in 2017, I started the Ascension sessions because I felt this other sort sense of urgency around helping people understand what ascension is because there was the christian definition and then there was the new age definition and the spiritual definition and so i just started interviewing spiritual leaders on the topic of ascension so that we could create more awareness around what's what we were about to embark on or what we were already going through but you know it was just starting to kind of become more popular um and then two years later, I started my healing practice um, in 2019 because I felt really called to help people on a more tangible level, like hands on, energetic, you know, like really affect people on a one on one basis. And then COVID happened in 2020. And I felt like something just like put the brakes on, you know, my business. And it was, um, it, I, w I had the same reaction as you. I was like, I do not consent. I did not sign up for this. I'm not going to play along. And the minute the news hit, I was like, COVID, you are not allowed in my field. You are not allowed in my body. You are <laughs> yeah. not allowed in my family's field. And I mm -hmm. just did this energetically to the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And so I was pissed off because I was yeah. in a place where people were wearing masks outdoors on a trail that was eight feet wide and you would get the stink eye if you weren't wearing one. And I was just like, this can't be happening. This can't be happening. So then I had this other, a new sense of urgency to move. And I had to leave Northern California because I couldn't yeah. function. I literally felt like there was this veil over me that was keeping me down. And I was like, I need to get somewhere where I can spread my light and do my work in the world. And I just felt frozen there. So we moved to Arizona at the end of 2021 in November. And, and Maria knows I tried to move to Southern Utah for 10 months. <laughs> and I couldn't make it work. And in those 10 months, like housing prices went up $100,000. And Phoenix was the last place I wanted to be. And when, when we finally decided to give Phoenix a try, everything flowed. The mm -hmm. realtor showed up. Yeah. The place to stay showed up. We saw five houses a day. We narrowed it down. We got the one we wanted. Like everything flowed. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm supposed to be here. Right. And so I, I gratefully accepted. I was like bowing down to the universe. And I was like, okay, I got this. And then, so I'm rip raring to go thinking like, okay, now I can do my work again and I can be on a mission and spread my light. And I got sick. I got hit with the worst allergies of my life. I almost died four nights in a row. I went into anaphylactic shock. I was like, um, my kids were terrified. I thought I was going to die. And that went on for three months. And during that time, um, I was miserable because I was in pain. My face broke out in hives about 10 times and, you know, couldn't breathe. And, um, and my friend who's a light worker here said, yep, welcome to Arizona because <laughs> number one, Arizona is known for having really bad allergies uh giving people allergies and number two the land here makes you deal with your shit sorry i don't know if we can curse on here but it makes you deal with your <laughs> stuff it just really puts it in your face and i was like yeah you could have warned me before i moved here you know and um and that's when i had to embark on because i had like several dark nights of the soul like even before we moved and and that's when I was like, okay, I can't put off shadow work any longer. And so I just dove full, full, full on into my shadow work. And it took me like 10 or 11 months. And so I thought I was going to hit the ground running here and get to do my work as a light worker. And it was no, I had to go into hermit mode. 
I was in, I was in hermit mode for like a year and I tried to come back out in um, April and I was like, okay, I'm back. And then I was like, no, I'm not. (laughs) And I had to go back in hermit mode again. And um, it's funny because like, it's just interesting how the universe guides you and you think you're like on this mission and this path and then your guides are like no you're not ready you need to do this right now you need to heal and so um tying into what you were saying Therese about like the light workers like we think we're ready or we think we're in this peak I don't think we are I think we're just embarking and I think like it's you know the darkest part of the night is just before the dawn like i think we're all being prepared right now and i had to go through that hermiting phase and i had to go through that dark stuff and i had to heal my inner child wounds because what's coming is going to be really intense and that's when we're really going to be needed to stand in Mm -hmm. our light and stand in our power so Um, So I guess to to sum it up, Maria, I I would say for me, I just kept getting these like really strong inner knowings and senses of urgency that like, I got to do this, then I got to do this, and I got to move, then I got to, you know, and it was just like, just following that divine calling, you know, so it's really, I love hearing all of your stories, and I love how like some of us had similar reactions. to the pandemic Mm -hmm. because um it's like you just know you just know you don't know how you know but you just know right Mm -hmm. so thank you for listening yeah I'd love to share just a little a little bit um I shared the message that came also uh right as the pandemic uh was coming to the u.s um i was shown a vision i'd already been shown back when i would seen visions of this time didn't know when particularly but um what i'd been shown is that like the the big war you know spiritual war that was coming down that would be reflected in our environment and in our economy and our health and and all of that that uh that a lot of you know it was a long game that had been planned for a very very long time and uh and that a lot of people would just be willing willingly walk themselves into subjugation and as soon as covid hit i'm like oh okay i see i see what's gonna happen i see what's happening Mm. um and you know at first I thought maybe my mission was to share these visions with other people. And then I realized there's so much fear. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it's just kind of been this my whole life is is seeing powerful visions that people aren't necessarily ready for uh, only stirs up the fear. And so the the message that's been the whole my whole life has been, you know, you can you can try to tell people what you see and then you can be like, I told you so, and you're right. But this is about feeding your ego. Um, And that's not what this is about. Mm -hmm. What, what this is about um, as a light worker is what, how do we, how do we help and how we help is to cultivate the love and let go of judgments and to let go of that inner conflict and to, radiate the presence of loving kindness and so that's what i've been doing for myself and showing up recognizing people are in trauma and fear and even when they're making decisions that i'm like wow that it, my little ego self's like that's really fucked up <laughs> you know instead of instead of <laughs> saying that you know just recognizing this person's in fear right now and so regardless of what they choose to do because they're sovereign just as I am I'm going to stand in that love and that sovereignty and radiate it uh, as a permission on a on a frequency level instead of the vocal level which may counter things that they're telling themselves or somebody the government or whatever has been telling them that they have to do to be safe and instead just embody the presence of my own sovereignty and loving kindness in the face of being different. And that I, I felt like I skated through COVID um, 
with a lot of, you know, not, not, not actually experiencing a lot of the things that a lot of people were afraid were going to happen. And a lot of people did encounter, I feel like it just was like water off my back. And I feel like we got to, to, you know, create safe and our mission for our nonprofit is to create safe and sacred spaces for a diverse community to learn, heal and grow together. And we got to attract people from all the full spectrum of beliefs and practices who got to come and feel safe and held and that they got to belong. And I feel like that continues to be um, Lightworkers biggest impact is the, the frequency doesn't matter what our beliefs or practices are. Um, doesn't matter who's president. I got told that, you know, 2016, 2020 is like, doesn't matter who's president. None of that mm -hmm. matters. What matters is what are, what is Amanda doing? What am I doing? That's creating the, the beacon, the frequency of loving kindness and to be curious about how do I elevate every situation I come into, whether it's my own internal hard times in a relationship or out there, mm -hmm. how can I bring, how can I elevate it and bring loving kindness? And that has been a guiding light and it's been really, really helpful. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, you guys are hitting some incredible poignant points here. Um, uh, let's talk about Ascension in our, the last um, 20 minutes or so that we have together. I would love to hear, <clears throat> so where we've been, we've kind of been talking about where we've been, what has catalyzed us to get to where we are, like what we were shown and how we took action on the information that came through. Um, a lot of information about turning inward, a lot of information about when you transform here, that is what is yours to do because it will emanate out and you're part of yeah. the network. So you're not alone as you do this work because there are millions doing that work, that inner work. And so one thing that um, is curious to me is, you know, we get a little bit of information from the helpers around the future and what potentiality awaits us. And it really is up to us what that's going to look like. And I really believe that part of our what is ours to do as star seeds is to support people through the trauma transmutation, but and then into the self validation of being a co creator, a co dreamer with the great dreamer, and realizing how powerful we are to create reality. Mm -hmm. And that we literally, in these final stages of the dismantling of the false toxic reversal structures, we can be saying no to them at this point. We can just simply be saying no, like the no that, that um, Cherie and Therese gave at the start of COVID, you know, it's like we can still do that. And now it's actually has even more impact. So and I, I, I would love to jump on this only because what you're saying is so relevant to um, I do karma cards on YouTube, on my YouTube channel every week. And yesterday I did my message and the message that they wanted me to talk about was, they said, you are masters of time. You need to realize that you, you all are masters of time, which is, there's so much nuance in that statement too, because it's not just about the time, this present moment time, which is a very powerful place. It's your power lever, right? This this present moment, but also the timelines that you're you're going on and um oh my gosh i just I, like i got flooded with information so really quick maria just drop the question back again so i can anchor it in because i am i have a point <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that the, there's there's a lot of different possibilities for potentialities for the future and ascension Hello. is happening we're in the midst of ascension and there are yes. many, many layers to ascension and every aspect of life is 
is ascending and we're we're having catalysts from everywhere to yes. us into mm-hmm. you know becoming our next self but we are we are co-creators so let's be empowered and realize how powerful we are and so you brought in we're masters of time we're masters of time and I, I know that you and I have chatted about the law of one. I, I love that material. It's so potent and resonant. Like the first time you hear it, mm-hmm. if it's resonating for you, it's just like zing. It's like everything that you're like, okay, there it is. Uh, and they're talking about, you know, well, one of the things my team has always said is there's nowhere to go but up. So ascension is inevitable. We're, we're in a type of cycle um, where it is going up. It's not going to be a descension cycle. That's not the time period. There's, it's a, it, you can look at the bigger cycles of time, like a giant circle, like a giant clock. And where we are at at the clock is we're going, okay, if we're going clockwise, we're at like 11 o'clock about to hit 12, which would be the golden age, right? So nothing that happens is going to devolve right down into, you know, a, de- a descension. It's it's going to be an ascension. The question is, is it going to be easy or hard? What would you like? <laughs> like, uh, would you like this to be yeah. easy or hard? Yeah. What I also get in regards of the timing right now is in the law of one, they often talk about it as harvest or graduation is a, another like metaphor for ascension. So I like to use harvest sounds a little bit too like creepy. All I see is that big sight. <laughs> no. <laughs> So I like to, I like to go with graduation, but if you think about graduation, then you, what you know is that you're here in a school of sorts, like Dolores Cannon often got in her work is that earth is a type of school. Um, and that at the end, before you graduate, what do you have to do? You have to take your tests. And that's really where I feel we are. We're in exams now. Mm-hmm. So exactly. The exam period started like 2020 where the little clock watch was like time to go here's what do you know based on everything you've been through based on everything you've studied all of your life experience what choices will you make now when it gets fucking weird when it gets because it's only going to get weirder before it sort of resolves itself it's yeah you know, I've heard some people call it end time madness. And at the time when I heard that, I was like, oh, that seems extreme. <laughs> like, that's not going to happen. And then <laughs> we're here. <laughs> so it is happening. And it's probably going to get more intense because, you know, this, this death cult, this, the people who created the false timeline, you know, one of their names is the cult of personality, why, which is why it's so ego rich, why they're so you know, every, everything is shifted to identity, right? It's all about mm-hmm. identity. How do you identify? That's their, that's one of their signature moves right there is to get you locked in your ego. Um, they know it's mm-hmm. coming to an end. They absolutely yeah. know this timeline ends because anytime you take something from frequency into matter, matter's finite. It has, you know, just think about furniture you've owned, like your couch, you've probably bought multiple couches in your life because couches die eventually so do so does any furniture right it gets used it's finite their timeline is finite they know it their whole goal is extension right how can I, how can we extend this out a little bit longer but they know it's mm-hmm. coming to an end mm-hmm. so here we are yeah. at this point where we're in exams and all that everything that everyone's bringing up is so potent because it's part of the exam it's like are you going to here's the here's the work that resonates for you, but now you need to put it into action, right? All the loving kindness that you pray right. for when it was easy, will you use it when it's not as an example, mm-hmm. you know? And so and going back to what I was saying, we are masters of time. We're choosing the timelines right now. Yeah. It's an active choice. And, and the, I think the part that I think is a little bit stressful to me is that we can move off. So it's not choose it once and you're good. It's not locked and loaded at that point. You got to keep choosing it again because you have the free will to change your mind. You have the free will to go, you know what? This is this is stupid and I'm not doing it anymore. And you get to move to a different timeline. So I, I hope that's answering the question. It's just you'd really triggered that like remembering. And yeah, I just great to- context. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Thank you, Therese. 
So what is ascension? What is this? What are the possibilities here? How do we help people to realize that they are participants in creating what comes next? Well, I, Maria, I, I remember you saying uh, that you were curious about, you know, how do people deal with ascension symptoms? Uh, like a lot of fatigue <laughs> and headaches and, and, um, and uh, I just had a Pleiadian download that made me want to get out of my body, which was really unusual for me. Um, and, you know, just to be to I, I think really what what we're all being called like this all ties together is remembering our connection. You know, the pandemic really created a lot of isolation, which is you know, and, and one of the basic human needs and basic human wounds, which got really activated is that sense of belonging. And we've all been disconnected from source. We've been disconnected from earth. We've been disconnected from everything that's greater than us that wishes us well. We've been disconnected from all of our relations and remembering our interconnectedness. And so having the opportunity to build relationships and i look at we're in mercury in retrograde i look at mercury in retrograde as a cosmic sabbath which means instead of trying to fight the tech issues drop into your relationships <laughs> have conversations but you know spend time get getting connected get to know your neighbor get to know you know your connect with your friends connect with your family connect with the earth sing songs to the day when you wake up in the morning you know give thanks for everything that's in your life and start to build those relationships human non-human you know everything the more that we do that the more we feel held and the more that everything that's greater than us that wishes us well has the ability to penetrate our dense consciousness you know on different levels but we all have this dense consciousness that all these helpers are trying to help us and when we feel alone and isolated we want to get the fuck out of here you know it's too much it's overwhelming but when yeah. we are like okay we're all in it together um you know whether you take entheogen sacred psychedelics or you do a dieta with roses you know or you just eat more clean diet uh, just there's so many ways to remember the connection with everything and, and to to indulge, mm -hmm. indulge mm -hmm. in that. It's what we need. We need our community. We need that remembering on a lot of different levels. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's not just a, oh, yeah, I know that it's a practice. It's a daily practice. Yeah. So that's that's my two cents for how to deal with ascension and how yeah, to deal with good. this time right now is to cultivate those relationships and those connections. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. What, and I would what you just let me just tag oh, on to ahead. what Amanda just said. What you just said um, makes me want to just be very clear that symptoms of ascension are not just the negative. We're also feeling the awakening of abilities happening as well oh. that can be misunderstood and create disorientation like in our inner physiology because it's like going from mm -hmm. sea level to 16,000 feet top of Mauna Kea right it's like suddenly you have to reorient and acclimatize to the higher frequencies on the planet and so oh, yeah. we are having mm -hmm. the, the the altitude sickness at the same time that's just like wow I'm I'm suddenly telepathic, you know, and, and all of these abilities <laughs> yeah. are, are, are birthing, being revealed, unlocking in us. So it's an interesting mix. Mm -hmm. Can I, and I, was, mm -hmm. I just want to say one quick thing yeah. is I know that growing up, I was the only one like me. I know definitely indigo starseed person. And so to make myself feel okay it was like i'm very special and there's nobody like me in that isolation and then you know i had to let go of that identity 
when I started, when I moved to California, like, oh, there's a whole, a whole bunch of people, you know, and, and it was a little blow to my ego and to just let go of that and to recognize there's no competition. <laughs> you are special and unique. And thank God there are other people you can talk to about this, who can hold space for you. So to let go of the lone wolf, I bet I got to do this on my own. I can't share. It's not safe. That's why I'm saying like the community is so important and it's out there. It's out there for you. Even though we've been spread and gridded, we are interconnected. <laughs> yes. Uh, and these conversations are what can help us through those really challenging times that feel overwhelming. Yeah. Um, I am going to yeah. have to, because um, I'm having some tech issues, but also I'm headed up to Mauna Kea. <laughs> Yay! So um, can you guys, you guys, okay, you guys can hear me? Okay, so my last um, uh, tidbit on, on this is... Um, your breath is really, really important. And uh -huh. when you're having that intensity, you know, I know when I sleep, sometimes my legs tingle and um, I get the ringing in the ears. And um, sometimes I, I, I can feel anxiety. I feel pressure on my body. And the breath really has, has been key for me to get through all of this, especially mm -hmm. even in the anger, because when this went down, I was so angry. And I was, I was like, how are you guys I remember being at Costco and they said outside pumping gas and they said, you have to wear a mask. And I just looked at them. I said, this is not a communist country. I said, I'm not putting anything on my face. And the, and the ladies, I said, this is not communist China. I said, I'm not putting anything on my face. And, and the lady said, okay, just, you know, let her, let her do her thing. And this guy on the other pump said, you go lady, you know, and I just remember being angry <laughs> for me and each one of you guys saying that each one of you guys saying, you know, you, it's like, you guys said, I do not consent. I do not consent. I was I, just breathing into that anger. I mean, my sister was like, Michelle, why are you so mad? I'm like, she, oh, and then I had a, I had a family member say, Michelle, these are the rules. And I said, this is America. We don't have rules like this. And that, and I, so the breath has really, really helped me to, um, to get through my own, my own anger and my own, um, story about what is right and what is wrong because this is what is supposed to happen right now right and one of us we are on our mission we're doing what we're meant to be doing because our heart's calling us to that and speaking our truth and that's the other thing i want to share if you're mm -hmm. watching this do what's in your heart do what you know is right not what you know is easy because the the and i don't even want to say powers that be but the propaganda lies especially being a woman and being told, you know, that our body, you know, isn't right. If it doesn't look this certain way, that's a complete and utter lie because the power of a female woman of our intuition and our inner strength, especially when we come together is that's another reason why they wanted to keep us apart. Because when we come together, we are so, so powerful. And we literally, the frequency of who we are, we don't even need to speak. We don't even, it's like Amanda, she just resonates that light. We don't need to say a word. You know, when those cops came, you know, to tell me I needed to put on a mask and, and I just, I remember walking into the uh, police commission and the, the bad cop was there and his whole demeanor was changed and we made eye contact and I made sure to pause. So he knew I was looking right at him and I was not afraid. And the breath was, which is what, that's what helped me. That's what helps me with holding my courage and holding my inner strength is breathing all the way down in my diaphragm. And no matter what feeling I have, just go, this is a normal human feeling because I'm in a normal human body and there's nothing to fix here. And the breath is what, is what really supports me. So I just want to say so much aloha to you. Um, my, just really quickly, my website is Blossom Inner Wellness. Blossom Inner Wellness. Uh, if you go on that, you can get uh, a video series that's free that helps you to um, have more um, uh, inner strength and confidence and peace. And it's filmed at the Peace Garden, which is right below where Maria lives. It's my favorite place on the big island of the uh, Paliaku Peace Garden. So uh, that's a free video series you can get if you go to blossominnerwellness.com. And to all you amazing sisters, I just send you so much aloha. And I'm so grateful that, uh, that I was able to meet oh. you. And yeah, thank you for the invitation. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Michelle. Yeah. All right, aloha. Thank you for all you've added. Thank you, Michelle. To the, mount, to the Blessings. Mount.
Mm-hmm. Will do. Will do. Aloha. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hello. Awesome. That was beautiful. Go so uh, your question on ascension. Yes. So for me, uh, ascension is like the school of self mastery. I like to sum it up like that um, because even though we're all going through it as a collective and it really is like way bigger than us, it's way bigger than this planet. Um, it starts with us. And I feel like, you know, as a seed here or star seed or human or whatever you want to call it, like we're all going through it together with the planet, whether we want to or not. And it's an opportunity to lift humanity's humanity as a whole we're lifting our evolution we're going through an evolution you know we've been in this 3d um matrix society and now we have the choice to move into 5d and i think that we are already going from three to four to five all day long like we go Mm -hmm. in and out we go back and forth you know depending on what's happening Um, But it would be nice to kind of leave 3D behind for a while, (laughs) except when we really need to be in that like hardcore dense physical space. Chocolate's Um, better. And I'm just excited. (laughs) Right. (laughs) I'm just excited. I'm excited for people to come online with their telepathic abilities. I'm excited for people to feel their best selves. Mm-hmm. I'm excited for people to be in their highest integrity and love frequency. You know, I'm I'm just excited for what that whole new paradigm can bring to everyone, you know, and the planet, because I just think like, it, it sounds like this amazing, you know, um, utopian world. Um, but I think that if we, if we hold that vision and we hold that, um, that awareness and that desire, you know, because we are such powerful co-creators and manifestors, we can usher in the new earth to look how and feel how we want it to. Um, So, but it really starts with us. It really starts with doing that individual work, the breath work, the meditation, you know, the simple things, eating, eating well, um, getting in nature getting in touch with nature all of that um right now it's been really intense with the solar flares the schumann resonance going offline uh six planets in retrograde right. like it's been really <laughs> intense <laughs> and personally for me like some of the physical symptoms i've been experience experiencing are like inner heat like all of a sudden i i'm like a sun basically i'm the sun and i'm just radiating so much heat you know and i just have to like drink a ton of water and try to cool off um then there's times when i'm feeling like lots of lethargy and like i feel like i'm walking on the bottom of the ocean and it's really slow and i'm like wading through this thick dense energy um And there are times when, like the other day, I I forget what was happening. I think we had like massive solar flares and I could just feel like head pressure Mm -hmm. like this, you know, and it wasn't necessarily a headache, but it was like head pressure. Mm -hmm. Um, So I get like all kinds of different symptoms. And the biggest one is that when the energies get really intense like that and when I feel like new light codes coming in, um i go into battle the astral realm Uh uh-oh can you hear me yeah can you still okay so uh oh oh now we can't batteries are dying can you hear me now yes okay so i'll go to sleep you know i'll get eight or nine hours of sleep and i'll wake up feeling exhausted like i didn't sleep a wink And I know that I was battling all night in the astral realm. Um, You know, I've had different experiences where I come back with physical symptoms. And um, I believe that I'm like an emergency room nurse or surgeon, you know, when I'm in the astral realm. And I think that, you know, this battle that we're going through with light and dark is a real thing. And we get to be part of it in the astral realm. So it's really intense right now if you're 
a star seed or light worker and you're in that battle <laughs> of light and dark because I feel like I have six jobs. You know, I'm like a mom, I have three businesses, I'm a star seed, I battle at night in the astro. I'm like, <laughs> when do I get to rest? <laughs> right? I don't rest when I rest. So That's, it's really, it's I, really. I, I want to piggyback on that because I had, um, back in 2019, I had a quantum healing hypnosis session. And at the point where you're, your higher self comes through and starts talking. One of the things it told me is it said, you know, there's a lot of concepts for us coming through that they're like, you know, they're like little exams or little tests, things that you have to get. And they're like, when Therese can't process it consciously, can we just put her to sleep? We'll put her to sleep so she can process it. So it's like one of the yeah. things that happens is I'll be totally fine and then at a certain point it's like someone knocks me out I can't even keep my eyes open right. and I don't you feel full right but you I just have to lay down <laughs> but I don't go deep I don't know about you guys but yeah. it's like I can't go deep I'm in that weird trance space I'm in the somnambulistic yeah. trance where I can hear everything yeah. happening but it's like I can't mm -hmm. move and it's mm -hmm. like I don't know what's coming in because it usually has to go in and integrate and then it'll come up in my consciousness when it's appropriate, but they've been doing that a lot lately. Mm. Yeah, wow. That happened to me two days ago. It was like the middle of the afternoon and I felt yeah. this, that pull that you feel. And I was like, I have to go lay down, you know? Yes. And it's like, I thought I was gonna go deep and I thought I was gonna like be out for three hours. And I just laid there and like, after like five or 10 minutes, I snapped up and I yeah. was like, it never happened. And I was like, this is so weird. I thought I was going to be out for at least an hour or two, and it just lasted like 10 minutes. But I was like, well, I guess whatever I needed to get happened. So that Deep was breaths. good. I didn't waste a bunch of time. <laughs> Deep breaths yeah, is important. Just, I'm yeah, also, I've uh, also noticed uh, let, needing to eat a lot less. Like my body is getting fed from source and a lot of liquids, a lot of clean water. But yes. it's like a yeah. lot less food, nutrient dense, but not much less food. And my, I'm much happier uh, that way. Yeah. I have a, a question. Does anyone, because this is how they've been working on me. So if it's not supposed to be in my system anymore, I suddenly develop an allergy to it. It's like, yeah. can't. It, it, like yep. I remember, I heard the one about alcohol, and I was I never was really into alcohol, so that one was easy for me. But they were like, "You're gonna stop having." I used to do wine spritzers, like wine o'clock at night. You know, I'm like have my little wine, and I liked it. But they were like, "Okay, this is it. You're done. Like this part's done." And I was like, yeah. "All right, yeah." But yeah. other things, they were like, "This needs to stop," and I'm like, "No, no, 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 no." <laughs> so just allergic to it, so yeah, that it was yeah. like, stop consuming it. Right. Yes, that happened to me with coffee. Hmm, yeah. yeah, and now it's happening with black tea. I have a really horrible acid stomach when I even just have English breakfast tea. Wow, I'm so mean, but I mean I get it. But I'm, I'm, finding, I'm finding ways. You know, I'm really into green tea right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I, I don't know some... being white tea. <laughs> You're gonna white, go from I green to white. Where? Yeah. There's a, yeah. a thing that I, I was introduced to called Dandy Blend. Have you guys heard of Dandy Blend? Yeah, okay, there's lots of versions of it. Yeah, I have one called Coffee Fix. Write that down. All the different I, I, I love it. It's, I mean, it's dandelion root, so it's like detoxifying at the same time, but I get to pretend I'm drinking coffee, and it's like... Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but, I know. Yeah. So whether, you know, um, whether we have this solar flash right this like uh, the frequencies get to the point where our solar logos um releases you know coronal mass ejection um, that actually engulfs the planet that's one thing that said we'll kick out all uh, negative ai on the planet and when we reboot um everything will be all the new structures and systems will be birthed from the positive polarity and therefore won't make anybody sick um, but this could also, this could also occur without one major event. It could just be an incremental, uh, yet exponential um, frequency 
enhancement and just larger and larger. Um, you know, the sun has completely changed color. It's it's like this white, white sun. The other day I was I was sitting on the lanai looking at the sun as it was nearing um, sunset. And I could stare right at it without blinking and it was morphing and changing color and the whole sky around it was like a plasma pulsating pink and all the yes. clouds went rainbow and there's like it. rays coming out. Yeah. And I'm like, what is happening? That happened last <laughs> night. We were driving and the sun is setting. It was this incredible color. I can't even really identify because it was like peach, but fiery glowing and and but there was this magenta coming off of it that yes. was literally and I noticed this a couple of years ago but it's like at night at a certain time everything goes pink and it's like my favorite time I'm like I just want to stand there and be bathed in all this pink light but yesterday it was magenta and it was so intense that it was like as soon as you looked away from it everything looked magenta yes. it was like having exactly. glasses exactly exactly yeah it and was so super cool. yeah we get we get incredible sunsets here in arizona i mean that's one thing i've really loved about being here is we get these just gorgeous like pink yeah, dramatic yeah. skies and billowy clouds and it's yeah it's really incredible so the sun I, I is, is a guide the yeah the sun is a guide for us through these through these times and it's it's not just symbolic it's very real and part of what the helpers have told us for years is just like, re remember um, your connection with the sun. The sun will always purify you and bring you back to center and to your I am presence. And they're like, you know, at higher dimensions, at sixth density, there are cities of light in the sun and people are in the sun in council, like the council of the sun. And these beings of the sun that kind of like emanated the law of one at that solar logos radi you know emanation they are mm -hmm. on mission on all the planets in our solar system anchoring in the sun's streaming you know like the ascension codes and so mm -hmm. some people are waking up to that role that they play here on earth that they're members of the council of the sun from the sixth density solar realms right infinite realms and so we have like, um, we have these earth changes that are happening and are inevitable. And mm -hmm. everything positive that is occurring, that is towards ascension is, and we can witness it being reversed with those who still remain, mm -hmm. you know, the puppet masters, I think they're all gone, but the puppets are still um kind of perverting the ascension um experience and making it into something fearful and when i go into my um very like the communities that i spent most of my life in in california were very about sustainable living everything and it was very steeped in climate change activism and narratives around climate change um, that now I don't subscribe to anymore to a large degree. And just simply because what is causing climate change, I don't subscribe to their reasons anymore. And yet that's what I was educated in and indoctrinated into. Um, and like where fossil fuels come from. I believed everything I was taught about the earth and geology and the planet. And then I read, you know, and then you read the law of one and then you read Radu Sinemar's Transylvania sunrise, sun moonrise books and these books. And it's like, Oh, there's a black hole at the center of the earth and it generates light. And so it's called the inner earth sun and there are inner earth civilizations and they're at the astral realm. And that's where Shambhala is in the astral realm of inner earth. And then there's the etheric civilizations and then there's semi etheric closer to the surface and there are access points into the inner earth all over the earth and the last time major earth changes happened 
And a made, you know, when we went into the forgetting times, there's a mass exodus of the Mayan people into the inner earth, right? And the Hopi people went into the inner earth um, to survive. Mm -hmm. And in the past, there used to be open access. There was sharing. People lived in the earth. People lived on the surface. And then it became very segregated. Inner earth has been holding down the higher consciousness. They have much more advanced technology. And now that the surface is going through a transmutation, what the helper said is that we are literally coming into balance. The whole earth is going from the split consciousness, the inner and the outer were not synchronized. Caleb mm -hmm. inside of Mount Shasta was holding it down for Northern California, right? So that there mm -hmm. could be an awakening. Well, now yeah. the surface and the inner are going to synchronize and be harmonic. The inner and outer inside of us and our outside external life here, they're actually going to be the same life. This is the fourth density jump into universal love, universal unity. Mm -hmm. So these earth changes are happening, but maybe not for the propaganda reasons that we're being made to feel like we're guilty, that we it's our fault. Right. And that there and it's this desperate um, despair looking at the future. I don't feel that at all. I, I feel so excited and ecstatic about the future. Um, and yeah. I just I know it's not going to be an easy ride because I know to a level my inner work and I'm showing up for it and it's not easy. So right. I know that I'm going to get there. <laughs> But it's like this commitment to doing the inner work and our inner mm -hmm. work creates weather besides the weather warfare happening, but are also the emotions of humanity, the mass emotional waves around the planet of popping open illumination and of fear and, and trauma, um, shock, shame, guilt, all of that is creating and exacerbating weather systems on the planet. And there's no right or wrong about it. It's what we have to go through. It's initiation through earth, air, fire, water, as we make our way into the birth ether, right? The, four, the fifth element comes online again, and we do experience 4D and the universal love. So let's wrap up our talk today mm -hmm. with this. Um, what, does, what does it look like on a planetary level? What does this inevitable ascension this inevitable harvest this inevitable graduation somebody mentioned that there is a, like a diverging timelines and mm -hmm. in my book i have a chapter called two earths because the helpers are like actually there's infinite earths <laughs> yeah what? yes i agree with that i agree with that and I, I guess i'll go um again i'm going back to choose your own adventure i i really do just like we've been saying throughout this whole conversation the real work is within the real work is within and it's all they they told me because of course you know as things got crazier i'm like okay what am i supposed to do to help give me the messages and i'll i'll do it and they're like continue to get people to focus internally focus inside yeah. focus on you because if you want to create unity you have to create a unified field and to do that it starts with unifying yourself Yes. Unify all the people inside, whatever that looks like to you. You need a bunch of people, get them together, create a unification field, and then you will literally be radiating unity. Mm -hmm. And that's how it works. It's going to ripple out in waves like that. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, I, I wouldn't, I, I would not tell anyone what it looks like because I, I don't want to appear to be an authority to another sovereign being it gets to be what you make it mm -hmm. it really gets to be what you make it and the more you can use your mastery of time reach into the future and go look at it go look at the future go look at the future you want to experience get detailed about it connect to it emotionally draw it into your life ask yourself how do i make this happen now and be that seed that creates it you you're the one who's going to create it so uh, you know, I would say pick the best version of what you think is going to happen and commit to it. 
rather than trying to tell you what my version looks like. Uh, my version looks awesome. So if you want to join me, <laughs> you are so welcome. But mm-hmm. I, I want to empower you to recognize that there are, like Maria said, there are infinite earths. Mm-hmm. You're going to end up on one of them. Which one would you like to go to? Mm-hmm. And you know, yeah. that whole AI implant, you know, um, oh, transhumanism. whatever, 2020 ID, like that yeah. whole thing, that was somebody's idea that they're yeah. trying to implement by getting everybody to sign in on it. Like, you know, maybe they have the money to kind of market it widely as if it is happening and real thing, but it's just a person or some people who have their story of a future that would benefit them, but not us. And we have the power to do that too. We have our yeah. ideas. We don't need yeah. to subscribe to anybody else's no. idea. No. If it brings you into despair and fear, throw it out, delete, uh-huh. you remove the files from your brain. Do not consent. Just uh-huh. don't consent. I don't consent, right? That, you are that so literally, uh, I, what I, I remember hearing about this in Convoluted Universe too, a Dolores Cannon book, but one of the things they talked about is during the time of Atlantis's golden age, they had a way of coming together as a community. They would gather the whole community in that area and the the leaders, whoever they were, they were, you know, delegated by the people, but they would come forward and they say, we have this idea. And they would share fully transparently the idea. And they would ask people if they agree. And if even one person did not consent to it, the idea wouldn't go through. And the reason why is because they had the wisdom to understand that one person not consenting warps the creation. It won't be what they intended it to be. Uh And so if you don't want that, don't consent to it. Warp the field. It won't happen if you're like, no. We can transmute anything. We can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We were talking about that yesterday, Maria, the whole ID chip in the hand. I've already said I don't consent to the ID chip in the hand. (laughs) So whatever plans they're trying to do with that and the payment system and, you know, uh, Starlink or whatever, I'm just like, no. That's not not part of my future. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. And I I would say also like um, really pay attention to any any limiting beliefs you have, you know, because that's where we get stuck. Like we are, we have them in our DNA. We have them in our ancestral lineage, lineage, lineages. And if we can clear, cancel, cut, remove all those limiting beliefs, then the world is literally our oyster, you know? So I think that we need to be really like introspective, going within, looking at, um, you know, what our own self mastery looks like and our own personal ascension and get really clear on what you want. Get, get, ask for clarity and ask for pure intentions for your highest and best good, you know? And if you can just master those two things, like you're going to create the world that you want and live in the new earth that you want to live in. Uh So I think that's a really important thing too. just those two things, even clarity, intention, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I feel a lot of, feel a lot of resonance (laughs) and I'll say, you know, throughout my life, there's been a lot of like, Oh, this is how it's going to be. And it's going to be so bad. I'm like, I don't buy it. Uh, You know, I'm not going to buy into it. And um, you know, I think be, to to uh break through limiting beliefs the biggest hack is to stay curious about what's what's greater you know so i i like to stay tuned into the prayer which means i'm tuning into something greater than me greater than my limiting thoughts and to stay curious okay if even if you're atheist if there was something greater than me that wished me well what might that future be you know, possible, what might be possible co-creating with something greater than my limited limiting beliefs and to stay curious about that and to stay, stay tuned into what would it feel like? What would it, and, and to let ourselves cultivate that inside of ourselves attracts it, attracts the ideas, attracts the other people that are willing to play on that level. And so Mm -hmm. I feel like, yes, we are choosing our own adventure and I don't want to choose an adventure based on my limiting self, you know, which means I I don't want to just determine how it's going to be. I want to stay curious about how it gets better, 
because mm -hmm. uh, that's, you know, that's the evolution for me. Ashe, mm -hmm. beautiful. So how can people find out more about what you all do? <laughs> you spectacular, incredible starseed women. <laughs> Give, give us your websites um, and any other contact information. There's, there's <laughs> I, I put it in my uh, LOF.com is my personal website. Uh, and then our nonprofit, livingwisdomchurch.org. We facilitate medicine, sacred medicine ceremonies. We're building community. We're creating safe and sacred spaces for people to feel like they can belong regardless of your politics, your practices, your spiritual beliefs. Uh, loving kindness is the foundation and curiosity. Thank you. Oh, hope to connect with you. <laughs> yes, thank you. Livingwisdomchurch.org for Amanda and all of her goodness that she offers. What about you, Sheree? Yeah. Uh, so mine is just my website, shereeariano.com. You can go there and, and learn all about the work that I do and the healing tools that I offer. And I'm also on all of social media still, <laughs> still on that program, <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, and uh, just venturing into TikTok for, um, for fun. So if you're on any of those platforms, you can find me, but it's also great to just connect on my website. So yeah, thank you so much. This has been fun and amazing being yes. with all of you. Thank you, Cherie. Beautiful. Thank you. So you can find me at blithestarlight.com. And there's a lot of different ways that we can interact together on my website. You can go check it out there. Uh, there's a lot of places <laughs> you can find me. Uh, number one, my YouTube channel, also called Life Starlight, and my podcast, Modern Mystic Soul Podcast, which Maria has an amazing episode on there. It was a lot of fun doing that one with you. That was a, that was a great episode. So, so you can check me out there as well as Instagram, Pinterest. Those are kind of the places that you're going to find me hanging out. Great. Thank you, Therese. And awesome. Blythe? And Blythe I also just like the name Blythe, B-L-Y-T-H-E. Yeah, so that's that's old English for joy. So joyful, it's like joy nice. and starlight. Those are the the feelings that I want to create. I want to just draw those out of people and I'll let them bask in that energy. Beautiful. Thank Beautiful. You. I sure. forgot to mention the Ascension Sessions. So I also have a YouTube channel called the Ascension Sessions where we talk about um, ascension, spirituality, consciousness, uh, contact, life on other planets. We go into the woo-woo and we get, you know, it's a lot of fun in there. And Maria has also been on that show. So <laughs> go find yeah. her episode as well. Yes. Yeah. And that's at uh, youtube.com slash The Ascension Sessions. The Ascension Sessions on YouTube. Yes. Perfect. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, you guys will get a... Um, get the link for this uh, panel so you can share it with your communities as well and they can learn more about me by going to sacredfuture.org and my book is on amazon and that's planetary ascension so uh, good the purpose of 3d and the choice we face and it really just goes into everything that we've been talking about and you know everything that we've been sharing today it's like we all have our own journeys and we need to be the author of our lives. We get to be the decision maker of what happens next okay. for us and wake up to how absolutely powerful we are. And part of that, that waking up is coupled with how absolutely profoundly loved we are mm -hmm. by the divine and by the universe. And once we realize the incredible resource that we always have right at our fingertips, inside and out around us. I mean, we're unstoppable when we put our heart, mind, soul towards a mission, towards a purpose, towards an intention. And then we come together with like-minded others for the highest good of all. That is opening doors. That is opening doors and giving others the opportunity to wake up as well, uh -huh. become those dreamers. 
So thank you all. This has been fun. I think we should do it again. We have so much more we could talk about. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> days and days and days. Days and days. Really, it's like slumber party. <laughs> Who hosts first? <laughs> That would be fun. I got bedrooms. I got bedrooms. <laughs> okay. Love you all. Have a beautiful Hello. rest of your day. Thank you. Aloha, everyone. Thank you. Aloha. Thank you. Mahalo. Thank you. Much love. <laughs>